wanted to thank you for joining me. Um, like I was telling everyone else, thanks for everyone for uh, joining us today for this edition of Author Talk. Again, my name is Aaron, and um, my guest uh, today is here to talk about the other side of the fitness world. Um, you know, a lot of times on Author Talk, we'll talk about fitness or yoga uh, or strength training in terms of you know how to get stronger and how to move more efficiently. Uh, but Ava is here to talk about the business side of the industry and uh, specifically the business side of yoga. Uh, so just a little background uh, that I have. Um, she is known as a go-to strategist uh, for the yoga, yoga business owners uh, and helps them take their businesses to the next level. Uh, she's collaborated with over 1,000 yoga teachers, uh, studio owners, um, and brands around the world. She's been featured in the New York Times. Uh, she's sat on the board of advisors for the Z Living Television Network and the Lineage Project. Um, she co-produced the annual uh, yoga garden at the White House during the, the Obama administration um, and both of the yoga classes in Central Park with over 10,000 attendees. It's quite a few people there. <laughs> um, you know, she, she's put uh, all of those experiences into one resource that we're gonna talk about today. Uh, you can learn from yourself called Your Yoga Business. Uh, tools and techniques for success. Uh, so again, thank you, Ava. It's a pleasure to talk to you today. Um, that is quite the resume there, um, but I, I do I do want to give everyone, um, you know, a, kind of a, a bigger picture of your background and accomplishments. And you know, um, I'm guessing you didn't just wake up one morning and end up in this spot. So kind of how did you get to where you are today, and how did you get into I guess this side of the business? Right on. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for that introduction, Aaron, yeah. and um, hello to everyone in the human kinetics uh, family and community. I'm so honored and excited to be a new author um, with this publishing house. So many of my friends and colleagues are, are also um, published authors with you all. So we're just sort of building this amazing family. And, right. you know, it's interesting because we're, <clears throat> we're in the fitness <clears throat> business, right? And the way I really think about what I'm doing is creating fit businesses, right? Creating right. healthy businesses. And my, my why, like the reason why I ended up in this place, and I'll give you a little bit of that origin story, um, but yeah. how I got here was really knowing that in order for there to be more yoga in the world, which was something that I became very passionate about, um, let's say about 22 years ago, okay. you know, I, I realized that the yoga businesses needed to be healthier if there was going to be, right, if the byproduct of them was the yoga itself, what happens if teachers can't make a living, okay. right? And, and that was really where, where part of it started, um, trying to help teachers. And there's a really great play here with the tools that are in the book that are for all fitness professionals. So whether you're a trainer or whether you're doing Pilates, and I have had clients across all different fitness modalities, yoga is just the, the sort of the vertical where I ended up going really deep because that was my personal practice. Okay. Um, but the tools are really relevant for everyone. And, you know, and it's like a super simple equation, like the healthier your business is, the more product is going to get delivered into the world. Um, but one of the things I love that, that, um, the editors at human kinetics actually let me do with the book was have it be one part memoir and one part business yep. tools. So I get to tell a lot of the story and we're going to talk a little bit about today in the book. Right. Um, you, you know, I kind of make some jokes throughout the content, you know, that you don't have to learn everything the hard way because I've already done it. <laughs> <laughs> so you get that, you know, in the book as well. You know, just these really tried and true stories of entrepreneurship, which that's what all fitness professionals are. We're all small businesses. We're all entrepreneurs. And so a lot of the business is trial and error, right? It's learning things the hard way. It's coming up with a new product concept. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And what do you learn and how do you take what you learned and move it forward, right, in your business? Yeah. It's, it's that whole cycle of it. Um, so... Anyways, I'll go back to the beginning, how I got here. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have a sales, marketing, PR, and, and, and business operations background. And so I've had you know, various careers in advertising and um, marketing and PR. Mm -hmm. And so I was actually working at Lululemon um, okay. back in 2006 when it was a very tiny company. Um, I think there were 11 stores at that time. This is before going public and becoming like the behemoth. Right. And my job was to take the marketing model in Canada and make it American, you know, make it suitable for the American market so that we could go public and, and open, I don't know, like 120 stores in a handful okay. of months or something crazy. Right. So it was just really like the, the birth of the Lululemon that we know now. And so while I was conducting my job, and this is in the Southern California region, 
Mm -hmm. um, I really got to know all of the athletes and I, my job was to find out like what their lives were like. What is, what's your real life like? How are you, how are you making a living? How are you mm -hmm. existing? What, what's important to you? What's working? What's not in your career? And while I was doing that, I realized that none of them had anyone helping them with the business side yeah. of being a teacher. Um, and so ironically, I realized <laughs> that what I was actually selling to them through Lululemon was maybe not the best thing for their business. Okay. And so while I was doing that, that that's where the actual the inquiry came from. So I keep giving you tank tops and we're selling an awful lot of black stretchy pants, <laughs> but you're telling me when we hang out after class that you can't pay your rent, right? And you can't right. pay your rent with the tank top. And so <laughs> I started to put the pieces together and I went, oh my goodness, well, who's helping you with the business side of being a professional yoga teacher? Mm -hmm. And at that point, teachers didn't even call themselves <clears throat> professionals. They were like, am I a professional? <laughs> Do I have a career? Right? right. This, is, this is 2006. This is before social media. This is the birth of yoga and, and fitness online, right on the internet. So this is like a really early phase for us with, with regards to like the trajectory and what was possible and the potential um, for a yoga teacher or a fitness professional. So that was like my aha moment. And I had saved up um, a little nest egg, right. you know, that I, I had you that I could use to, you know, I eventually was was let go um, by Lululemon so I could start my business. They all knew what I was doing and they were very supportive, but it, eventually like I was working with the Ditas and they were like, well, you can't. <laughs> Right. <laughs> you can't do that yeah, it was yeah. a little bit of a conflict and, and things <laughs> took off really quickly um, because there was such a huge need for business tools and support mm -hmm. within our space. So what mm -hmm. I observed in the Los Angeles region was actually a global phenomenon. There was no professional support or infrastructure across the entire yoga industry. So by the time I said, yes, I'm going to do this and I'm going to invest in myself and I'm going to I'm going to start this company. It was just like a wormhole in the universe. Mm -hmm. It just, I mean, it, it ended until COVID, it had not slowed down a beat. Right. And so all of those learnings and all of those tools over those past, I launched in January of 2010, you know, so that whole decade um, of learning and, and correcting and innovating mm -hmm. and really being on this wild ride, um, you know, as the industry really developed is, is all included in the book. And I think that so many uh, fitness professionals do appreciate this type of work and I appreciate you and the work that you've been doing because when I was going through this uh, book, I was thinking, uh, you know, as, as a trainer myself, is like you, I mean, you can go to school, you can learn, um, you know, about anatomy, you can learn about whatever specific area you are interested in going into. But in most of those classes, they don't teach the business side. And it isn't until you get out into that working force, into the real world, I guess, if you want to say, mm -hmm. that you realize that, wait a second, this is an area I don't know much about. And then people start scrambling to try to figure out as much as they can so that they can run your business. So um, definitely, uh, I guess, good timing for you that, that, that you were able to you know, give people this advice and, and get everyone started on that. Um, now, I know that so when, whenever we're talking about, you know, building a business or, um, you know, trying to follow through with the plan, I, everything has to start with an idea. And it's something that we dream about, whether that's, uh, you know, literally or figuratively. And in the book, right off the bat, you recommend envisioning your dream and becoming your dream. Now, what, what do you mean specifically by that? Because I, I think that was an excellent point to start off with. Thank you. Thank you. And it's, it's, it can be, I think dreams sometimes get a bad rap, you know, mm -hmm. because it, it's, it, it can feel maybe a little fluffy or a little, you know, in the clouds. And at the same time, you have to have a, a destination, right? It's, yeah. it's literally like, how do you set goals if you don't know what it is that you envision becoming, mm -hmm. right? right? So whether you want to be, you know, you want to play for the Knicks or whether you want to go to the Olympics, right? It's a dream basically yep. that is fueling you and that is then giving you those goals underneath it. And so I really encourage um, business owners, fitness pros to really think about their dream version of what their, their career can look like, what their life can look like. And the reason why I feel like, well, why I know, know that it's not just in the clouds is because we've done it. Mm -hmm. We've done it. I have sat with trainers and yoga teachers 
I, I just did um, took a bit took a class um, on Sunday with someone who was teaching their very first oh, wow. class. Oh, yeah. I, I have been in that room watching someone literally be born, right? Yeah. <laughs> as a as a teacher. Right. And then years later had this dream conversation with them and then put the goals underneath it mm -hmm. and watched it come to life. So that's why I started where I started because I think is is everything possible? Yes. Will you get all the way there? Maybe not. Mm -hmm. But if that's your north star, right, that's guiding right. you, then you're going to get you're going to be on your journey for one thing, which is super important. And I think there's a lot of um, mimicry in our space. You know, like you said, you come out of teacher training, you get your Pilates certificate, whatever that is, and you're just kind of like looking around. And so you do what everybody else yeah. is doing. You rarely give yourself a chance to go, what do I want? How do I want to carve my own lane? What do I want my life to look like, right? You start to get into <laughs> classes and hours and yep. it's, it's a real, <laughs> it's real. So that's why I start with um, envisioning your dream because I think A, it is all possible. B, everyone's dreams are incredibly unique and it's important to give yourself the time to think about what you really want out of your life because you, you it, this becomes you. Right. And and it's so much easier to then build a framework and goals underneath it when you really have that like destination, dream destination in mind. Yep. Have you seen, uh, I'm sure you have seen personal examples of maybe someone's going into a business, um, wanting to start their own business. And, uh, you know, they, like you said, they, they're not sure what to do. So they have this idea that they just want to copy another business that they've seen. But after you start consulting with them, you kind of like dig deeper and find out what their dreams actually are. How does that perspective change for them in realizing like how much they can actually accomplish compared to what they originally envisioned? Yes, it's a great question. And it's often quite freeing because mm -hmm. most people you know, social media is one of the best examples, I think. Yeah. So there was obviously a whole entire industry before social media came on the scene. And so that was a really confusing time. And I think it's still confusing for a lot of folks how active they need to be on social media and do they need to really be pursuing this enormous following and is mm -hmm. that gonna make or break their career? And so a lot of people really chase that. And a lot of folks were successful, I would say a, a small, small percentage of the population have been very successful at it, but everyone was still chasing it. And so I had a lot of folks who would come to me and say, well, how can I get my following? How can I da 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 da? And I would be able to say to them, what if I told you that 100,000 followers did not make you $100,000? Yeah. <laughs> you know, True. what if I told you that a complete different career structure, right? A, a complete different business structure can make you a six figure income. And yeah. so so it was very freeing because a lot of people were just doing it because all of a sudden everybody was doing right. it. And so I think that's a real concrete example of um, an inquiry, you know, an inquiry yeah. into why someone is doing what they're doing the way that they're doing it and then being shown some options, mm -hmm. uh, which is which is quite cool. You know, the writing process was so interesting for for me, you know, putting the book together, but we go through the different business types and the different service models. So you learn like, what are all the ways that I can build right. my career? And then what are the different elements of it? And you can literally like pick and choose and try mm -hmm. and put it together how you want it to be put together. Right. Um, so now when we're, uh, I guess like, you know, talking again, talking about running a business, you know, we, uh, we have to talk about, like you said, creating a concept or creating a product or service and introducing that to prospective customers, um, you know, finding a way to grow that product or service and make it better and help your business grow. And, and then obviously hoping that your, your business starts to mature in that way. Um, what are some of the main points that you like to hit on when you're consulting with people or with entrepreneurs, um, you know, about that full life cycle of a business and kind of bringing some of those realities to them? Sure. I think this is an extremely important question. Um, most folks don't know what they're getting into mm -hmm. <laughs> before right. they set out. Yep. So there's a, there can be a very unrealistic expectation of, um, I would say, the timeline of success. Okay. So, and again, success is relative. So everyone needs to, you know, needs a different amount of money to, to live at the, you know, to the level that they would like to live, right? So 
Right. But in general, it's like an eight year process to okay. start to build clientele, right? It starts with your local, it starts very local. I know very, very, very few uh, fitness professionals who skipped the local build right. and just kind of jumped right, unless they, you know, there's a, there's literally like a handful, but they spent eight years working on YouTube, right? Yep. Putting it, right. So they, you know, yeah. they didn't skip the time, <laughs> <laughs> right. right? Everyone pays, put in their time. And, and I, I, I really stand by this. Um, and so, you know, you've got to lay that foundation with the, with your products and, and services and build that rapport and build your community. And then you can gradually increase your price points. You can gradually diversify what you're selling to people, you know, but it does, it takes, it takes eight years, I think, to really kind of get to a place where you're going to be financially um, sustainable. Mm -hmm. And of course, this depends on if you're working within a studio structure or if you're working, you know, completely outside of a studio structure. I have a lot of folks who, um, you know, come to me when they're thinking about leaving their studio, right? So maybe they came up in a crunch or an equinox or something like that. And they're like, mm -hmm. can I go out on right. my own? Right. And we can look together. At what does a transition look like? Can okay. you move, migrate your clientele, like that whole process? So the life cycle of a business, I think there's, you know, to kind of to speak to that point, you know, there's the beginning, mm -hmm. right? The birth, like we said, like you're literally born, right? Yep. As an instructor, as a teacher, and then, you know, really growing and learning. Um, but I'm, I'm going to describe it a little differently because I think Whereas we're familiar with the life cycle, really, you know, you're born, you, you reach, you mature, mm -hmm. you pass on, right? right? Your business will have more, you, you don't just, you don't just die right. once. <laughs> <laughs> True. Fair point. Fair point. But you might, lots of up and downs throughout. Lots your business. of ups and yeah. downs throughout your business. And I think the reason why that's really present for me right now is just with this sort of three year cycle that we're coming out of with mm -hmm. COVID yep. and how COVID is really disrupted, especially for the yoga industry. Mm -hmm. um, the rest of the fitness industry recovered much differently okay. than the yoga industry did. We had, we experienced much more closures of, um, of studios than the rest of the, you know, boutique fitness did. Mm -hmm. I think part of that is because maybe the other business structures were a bit stronger, you know, kind of going in on, um, yeah. You know, and then of course, if they just think the type of activity that we're doing, where you're literally like breathing all over people, I mean, we just got <laughs> we just Fair. got demolished. Like, and and yeah. it hasn't come back. I would say maybe ten or fifteen percent of what the business was okay. before COVID, okay. as far as um, kind of returning returning to what what it was. And so, a lot of folks are kind of in a reimagining phase right now because everything that was is no longer or there's a few morsels of it that are there but people really have to kind of think fresh right now right. and really add, but kind of go not going back to square one because obviously you're on your path mm -hmm. right. right you're not at square one anymore but really thinking fresh so that that's very on my mind right now i think a lot of us i'm there personally you know with my own consultancy with my own business what do i want it to look like how do i want to pick up these pieces and and put it back together and it's this beautiful bit bittersweet, humble moment, you know, where you have to, you're like, you read my resume and I'm like, oh my God, that sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right? That was one of the, right. It was a peak. Yep. And then there was COVID <laughs> yeah. and like, and like no kidding on my business ran out of money during COVID, like all completely. And now we're back on an upswing. So I think I'm just very present with some of the ebb and flow of what happens with your business as an entrepreneur. And, you know, it won't always be as, I think as, as evident as what yeah. we went through with COVID, you know, is that distinct, mm -hmm. but it's still there. It's still there. And I think that it's important that you have good tools to reach to, to help you navigate those different moments and those, you know, maybe it's a, it's a life change. Um, mm -hmm. I've had folks change a career in a business model because they started to have a family, right? Right. They need to have a very, di like, there's lots of reasons why, you know, having good tools, um, are important, but like, it's always kind of <laughs> ebbing and flowing. 
Sure. How have you seen it in that context? How have you seen maybe your business shift or other uh, or other professionals who might own their own yoga studios? How have they kind of pivoted or shifted their perspective and maybe their their entire business model because of everything that you just mentioned? Absolutely. Great question. You know, one of the biggest things for me was sort of where our revenue was coming from. So yeah. before COVID, um, it's, you know, kind of common sense, like all your eggs in one mm -hmm. basket, right? Type of type of a learning that was very painful. <laughs> right. <laughs> right? But we were really heavily invested in in-person events. Right. So lots of, lots of people in the room, 10,000 people over here, yep. you know, really heavily invested in that where, and so let's say 80% of the business was that and 20% of the business was um, consulting, okay. right? Where I'd be working and coaching and educating and that kind mm -hmm. of a thing. And so obviously that was a really painful, you know, learning mm -hmm. that in hindsight, it, it's a book because I right. learned it, yep. <laughs> you know, how safe, how, how secure are, is your revenue, right? Is okay. it all based on you having to get up and get to the studio every day? Are you also offering things that are online? Are you working with groups and individuals? Are you creating things that will give you passive income so that, you know, your 20s, your your business is spread out across different revenue streams. And I think that's something um, that a lot of folks can really benefit from considering within their businesses, because we often just get really focused. Maybe we really love a particular element, but that also makes us more vulnerable um, sure. to, to changes that might come. Okay. Uh, now, maybe this relates to uh, what you just spoke on, maybe not, but I know an area of business um, that has that wasn't even relevant maybe 15 years ago maybe not even uh, 10 years ago is you know social media and digital marketing and i know you do touch on this in the book um i i know for myself um i never anticipated using social media as much as i do now to you know like highlight the accomplishments of my clients and to kind of promote my own brand and business um what are some of the aspects that you uh think are important for people to consider when it comes to social media and digital marketing um, and I, I guess maybe as a second part to this are you encouraging that more because of everything that we went through with COVID mm -hmm. <clears throat> so social media is obviously necessary um, mm -hmm. in our world right it's just a huge communication medium and I think to go back to where we started everyone needs to really do it in their own way it right. can be really really damaging for folks if I just keep it 100 like a lot yep. of people have a very love hate relationship <laughs> with social media absolutely and so i would say yes you need to do it but do it in the way that really serves you even if right mm -hmm. and that also goes back to that 100k versus 100,000 right. followers right you don't need those numbers in order to use social media well in your business mm -hmm. and in order to be consistent it needs to be tolerable right it needs to act i dare i say enjoyable right. if you're actually right. going to do it and use it well Mm -hmm. And I think that the biggest thing that most folks don't understand about social with relationship to their business is that the content that they give ought to match the content that they sell. Right. And so there's a connection, um, a content connection between what you, what you give and what you sell. And often we get the like, same thing, right? You're just watching what other people are doing and you're mm -hmm. just kind of posting. But do, do those things back up and build a conversation towards the product? So if you're selling you know, one-to-one -one coaching services, a uh, training package, right? What you're, what you're showing ought to be building towards those things. And I think that's an area where a lot of folks can usually use a little bit of, um, of refinement. And then just the consistency piece is always one of the hardest things for, for everyone. Is it more important now than before? I'm going to say, no. Okay. And the reason I'm going to say no is because I think there's a real desire to return to grassroots mm -hmm. and to be back in in person. So I would say it's not any less important than it was before, but that there's also this real desire. People want to be together again. Yeah. And so, you know, get out into your studios again, get back into your communities again, network again. Mm -hmm. I still need to do this for myself. I live in New York City. I used to be in a different studio two or three nights a week, mm -hmm. right? I'm <laughs> here in my apartment behind an LED light, right? And that's still a reality. Right. But there's people there and their clients and their customers and their folks that you can use to help reach your goals and vice versa. So it's not that it's 
more important or less important, but also that grassroots marketing, old fashioned networking, word of mouth marketing is yeah. increasingly um, important and, and it feels good. You right. know, it feels great to be back out in the world. And, and maybe that's, uh, that's a caution to some people who might try to overuse it for your business, going back to what we talked about at the very beginning and kind of like envisioning your own path. Um, like you just mentioned, sometimes uh, I think maybe people can get caught up in what they're viewing um, on maybe another teacher's page and say, hey, I need to do that, but maybe that's not the direction that you should go specifically. So uh, I guess my point there is just, just like don't, maybe don't get caught up in what you're seeing on there and let it kind of overtake your business. Is that accurate? Yeah, I, I definitely think it's, um, it's balance. It's yeah. just balancing it because it, it, it is, it can be an enormous time suck, right? Yep. You know, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and the truth is just not all of us are going to be influencers and you don't need to be. Right. You need yep. to make money in your business. So are your products selling? And a lot of folks, if, if I ask them this question, are you converting or mm. people, are you getting clients through your Instagram or are you just posting? Right. And a, lot, a lot of folks will say, well, I'm just posting. Yeah. We'll post less and go figure out, go to the coffee shop and yep. give somebody <laughs> your card. I guarantee you, you're going to get clients. Like, so I think it's really about, about balance and, but I'll say your words, don't get caught up because yeah. it happens. That's the way that social media works. It's sexy and it's you get, it's sticky, you know, it's designed that way. Yeah. And it is for most of us, it is part, but not all of what it's going to take to, to move your business forward. Yep. So maybe we can go back then to uh, what you spoke of is, um, you know, people want to be together again. They want to be in the same class instead of, you know, maybe taking the online class, like what might be an option. So what are some of your recommendations for people to build that aspect of it, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or like group uh, training, group sales? Um, what are some of your recommendations in that area? Mm -hmm. Good question. I would start in a, com in a community. You know, yeah. it just depends on sort of how you're positioned in, in, your, um, in your hometown, right? Where mm -hmm. you're living. Te technically, like you can tap into which is why most folks for instance we were speaking earlier will start in a studio and then venture out on their own right yeah, if you think right. about it, it's like a numbers game so where are you going to access the most people you're going to access the most people in places where people are gathering right. and so whether that's a yoga studio or you know working through a gym structure you know just being able to put yourself in a place where you can you can just meet more people at once mm -hmm. is is really like it's kind of a no a no brainer, even though folks, not everyone enjoys, you know, oh, I'm working at the gym, you know, but it's yeah. like, it's, if I told you that, I don't know any teacher who didn't start there, you right. know, and I'm talking about like your high flying super trainers mm -hmm. on beach body, like the whole thing, like they all started at the, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> at the YMCA, you know, yep. so it's, um, it's part of it. So I would say to go where, go where there's community, you know, there's so many fun things that are starting to happen again, the, the group outdoors and the meetups and you know it's um it's just important to be able to connect and then you also have to talk when you're there right, right? so <laughs> it's one thing to just go and get there but it's another thing to say hey my name's Aaron I'm a trainer yeah. I've got these you know I'm working on my specialty is you know nutrition coaching mm -hmm. or you know I'm maybe I'm there and I'm hustling and I'm saying hey Aaron I'm Ava like if you ever need help getting your business school set yeah. like hit me up. That's what I do. I've helped a bunch of successful teachers get on their way. And, you know, yep. and that I think is also a muscle that we need to remember to flex. Mm -hmm. And we're all out of shape <laughs> with this muscle because we've been, you know, we haven't been as social as we were um, in the years before. But, you know, don't discount the people that you already know that are already around you. Okay. You know, oftentimes it's like, if I could meet Oprah, mm -hmm. if I could just get on <laughs> all my business dreams will right. come true when <laughs> actually you know every everybody that you need if you if you will work backwards from your dream right mm -hmm. we'll just use that 100k that, that's going to be a certain amount of privates that's going to be a certain amount of coaching right mm -hmm. it's, it's you you build it you build your income based on your service your revenue streams okay. and once you really break that down most of us need like 20 clients 
Yeah. Right? Right. It's not this extraordinary, you don't need 100,000 followers. You really mm -hmm. don't need to be on Oprah. You right. need 20 clients that you see every other week, yeah. depending on your price point. I'm just, right. I'm, right. right? Yeah. Those are people that you, those are people in your, in your studio, in your coffee shop, in, at your, you know, mm -hmm. your partner's job. Like, right. so, you know, I think reaching success is it's just a lot more on the ground than folks think if they'll activate what's around them. Okay. A excellent way to put it. Um, and now shifting a little bit here. Now, I know you talked in, in the book about uh, the importance of mastering the big four. And I know we've talked about uh, those a little bit. Um, and the big four that you highlight again are strategy, operations, marketing, and finances. Um, how can people master the big four? And how important is that in being successful in your business? Yes, such a good question. I <laughs> I talk about it like wheels on a car. Yeah. Right? So, yeah okay. like four wheels on a car, and so that those are the big four that you just described, and so that's how important they are. Yep. You try driving a three wheel car. Okay. Not gonna work. <laughs> Not gonna work. So it's um it's an illustration of what it takes to be an entrepreneur, what it takes okay. to run a small business. And so we also, because as the profession, you know, as a service provider, you also have to teach the class, right? So right. this is a tall order. This is not easy. Not only does Aaron have to master the big four mm -hmm. and split his time, limited time, right? right administratively <laughs> yeah. on these four important elements of his business, Aaron's also got to go deliver the product. Right. So when this is working, guess who's up at six to go hit that, yeah. to meet that client. So I'm not saying it's easy, but that's that's what it's really talking about is that okay. you have to be able to deliver your product and be organized enough that you can move between each of these important components because what often happens is we'll just focus on one. Mm -hmm. So you'll really be great at marketing, but your invoices will sit stacked up or you're really great at marketing, but you let your liability insurance lapse. You'll be really great at marketing, but what's what? Um, but you're not planning, you're not thinking ahead, right? Right? It's just okay. strategy, right? Where am I going and why? So, with a little bit of simple organization, you just tag, you tag each area, right? It's not a ton. Sometimes it's thirty minutes at a time, okay. but you have to switch, right? right? Put on right. the other hat. Yeah so that you can keep everything moving forward. And that's really what Mastering the Big Four is about. It's, it's understanding what those components are, what they're comprised of, and then how do you actually schedule it into your life so that way you can be moving moving forward, right? That's how the right. car will drive. Yep. That's how the car will drive. <laughs> I, I love that analogy. And I think it's good to you know highlight those, to put everything into perspective. I think a lot of people uh, have the idea that they do want to be business owners, but they're not thinking about everything that's involved. And you, like you said, how many different hats that you actually have to wear in order to make that business successful. Um, and now, speaking to that, I, I wanted to get into the book a little bit more, like literally, and um, seeing if you can kind of describe uh, a couple of things that are that I noticed that are in it that I think are really cool. Um, there are frequent sections throughout the book called Real Talk. Uh, I like the real talk sessions. Um, and you also have, I, I think you kind of touched on this at the beginning, um, that it's not just a text with advice. You actually have worksheets and models for people to kind of follow um, so that they can do a better job, I guess, of, you know, putting putting all that knowledge into action to actually help them through those processes. So talk about those uh, two components a little bit and how important it was to include those in the book. Yes, thank you. Um, I'm glad that those are the, some of the elements that caught your eye. Yep. <laughs> real talk is rad because these are um, real fitness professionals. They're all yoga teachers in this mm. instance, but these are real, um, although Nicole also teaches Pilates, they are real life, they're real people that I've worked yeah. with and right. what they've learned and what we've learned together. And so I think, you know, again, like this book, and that's why I'm so grateful for my experience and for my clients, all of whom, you know, maybe our business relationship has, has shifted, but I'm really proud that like I have 
good relationships with it from that original launch in mm -hmm. January of 2010. And that's, that's a tall order. Right. <laughs> um, and so, you know, the real talk excerpts are, are, are from real people talking about what it's like being a business owner. And many of them are quite successful. And I think that that's, what's really interesting about it is when you see and you hear from someone who's got four books and who is one of the leading teacher trainers, you know, mm -hmm. in the world, most in demand teacher trainers in the world about the moment when they had four people in their class right. <laughs> and that, and that, and how they had to keep showing up for that and what that meant and what they learned. So you get some perspective mm -hmm. um, based on real careers in the real world. And so the right. real talk, I think is just super reinforcing of some of the topics and the things I'm seeing. So I'm not just saying some this stuff. Yep. I've, <laughs> I've lived it. We've lived it. People who are successful, you know, um, and, and sort of household names, many of them are household <laughs> name yoga teachers. Right. So you get to kind of learn from their experience as well. Okay. So that part was very important for me to just kind of ground the work. Mm -hmm. And I think also because folks don't always think of yoga and business together, it was also important for me to show that even someone that, that, that they've all been running businesses, basically, right. you, know, you know, you're not always asking necessarily someone like um, Dharma Mitra, right, to talk mm -hmm. to you about his business. <laughs> he's, he's like the OG, right, right, of the yoga industry. You don't always talk to him about like, what was it like? But when you ask him, when I interviewed him mm -hmm. and I asked him these questions, he knows exactly how he launched his business, right? And yeah. so it's yeah. just super fascinating. So you get a little insight there. And then with regards to the tools and templates, you know, because I started the company to really help teachers create healthy businesses, I knew that you, you can't, it's gotta be, it's one thing to just talk about it, but without a how, like, well, how do I actually implement it? For me, that's only half, <laughs> only right. half done. That's not a complete, not a complete offering. And so when we put the book together, I really wanted to make sure that not only would we be teaching about something, but then here's a tool you can use mm -hmm. today right away right. to start making this better, make this improvement in your business. Um, one that I'll highlight is the, uh, the, the, the event calculator, mm -hmm. <clears throat> which is really interesting. So, yeah. and you know, if anyone who's hosting a retreat, a workshop, any type of self-produced event or an event that you're doing in collaboration with the studio, and you're trying to think about what to charge and how many people might come and, oh my gosh, I need to buy mat spray mm -hmm. or you know mm -hmm. whatever these things are right expenses ticket price sales and then how much money how are aaron and ava going to split the pot right, right? we're going to do right. a, we're going to do a big class in central park next summer yeah. right we got the people mm -hmm. we know we can blow this up how do we make that deal together there's a template in the book that will show you where you could input those variables and it will do the math for you <laughs> <laughs> okay because these things are so important. Like I cannot tell you how many people don't understand all of those different variables. Mm -hmm. And so they start to plan these amazing events and they haven't thought about expenses. Right. Or they haven't thought about how much time, time mm -hmm. it's actually going to take to produce and market the right. event. They're just thinking about the time to teach. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's, it, it can be very painful and very costly. There's a story in the book. It cost me a lot of money to learn this lesson at one point. You know, yeah. we, we we did a retreat in Italy. We had the time of our lives, came back, and we owed everybody money. <laughs> we didn't know what had happened. So. <laughs> um, and there's lots of different tools like that, whether it's um, a marketing schedule, whether it is, I'm going to say the dirty word, whether it's a cash flow, so you understand how your money is coming in and out of your business um how to write a great pitch letter you know to help create more opportunities for yourself it's all here yeah all all excellent points like you said uh, some of those you had to learn the hard way but think thankfully for us and everyone else um you've experienced those and now you are sharing all those ideas so that hopefully all of us don't have to go through those so um this has been an excellent conversation. We've been going on for a little while, and I know that you're a very busy person, so um, I want to be respectful of your time for sure. Um, but I, I think it's a great conversation that needed to be had, uh, a, an excellent book and resource for, for everyone to, you know, 
uh, grab a copy of their own because like we both mentioned, you know, you can be an excellent teacher or coach or trainer. Um, but if you if you're not proficient on that business side, then, you know, things might fall apart eventually. So uh, again, if you don't have your copy yet, go ahead and grab it. It's on our website. You can get it many other places, your yoga business. Um, Thank you so much for you know hopping on today to to talk about all this. I will give you the last word to kind of wrap it all up, and uh, please let everyone know you know how they can continue following along with all the great things that you're doing. Right on, right on. Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, everything's that you know book related is at Human Kinetics, um, Ava N Taylor on Instagram or Yama Talent, which is which is the business that you know we started in 2010, and um, yeah. Feel free to reach out. I've always been very open with with support. You know, I get DMs <laughs> about business questions all yeah. the time. So you know, know that that this is I'm a resource. The business is a resource. The book is a resource. So please don't be shy. Do not learn everything the hard way. You do not need mm -hmm. to learn everything the hard way. If you don't ask me, ask another colleague, right? Who's in your field? Right. We often don't don't kind of tap our networks. Um, but yeah, just super excited, looking forward to getting the book out into the world. Um, folks who are training other folks, you know, it's a great resource for uh, your, your schools, right? To kind of plug into your schools to help make sure that when you graduate folks, they're not going out into the world, <laughs> not knowing what they're getting themselves into. So thank you so much, Aaron.